Jaja is coming there. Jaja will take you to the people out there. You gotta be, yes, gotta be. In our morning show, we're discussing the role of religion in young Muslims and a lot more. Joining us in studio is Mtima Sawazi, the founder of the Roots Foundation. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. How Thanks. are you? Good, good. Thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure to have you on the show with us this morning. Um, before we get into the role of religion in the life of young Muslims, let's talk about the Roots Foundation first. Give us a little background into yeah. the foundation. So the, the Roots Foundation is actually called the Oral Tradition. Okay. Roots Foundation. Um, Roots is an acronym for Reflections of Our Oral Traditions. What we do, we use oral traditions with a focus on spoken word poetry as a catalyst for social change. Mm -hmm. But as cliche as that may sound, we have three main programming where we allow persons to express themselves. We have festivals, so we host our own local festival called Cascado. We have interventions. Our main intervention is called Abba Senior, a Journey of Change, mm -hmm. which was designed to address specifically that gang issue that has left the streets and has entered the schools. Mm -hmm. And back then we were addressing the whole Rasta city, Muslim city conflict. And then we have Beyond the Lens, where we use digital media as a form of social impact and all about expressing yourselves, you know. And have you found with what you've, the work that you've done so far that it has been able to make a difference in the lives of the younger ones? Yes, yeah, um, your colleague I know this morning was... <laughs> Mentioning his nephews in our program because mm -hmm. um, part of the Abyssinia program, we have a program right now called different components. We have one called Aim High, okay, which is sponsored by the US Embassy and we're in four schools right now East Mokrapo, Mokrapo West, Arangas North, and San Juan North, where we it's a, it's a school violence prevention or reduction program. Mm -hmm. So we engage young people, we ask them, it's very important because to stop violence in schools. It can be you and I. Exactly. And the children, could they fight in? Mm -hmm. Right? Unless some parents come to school to fight. So we ask the children, what are the problems? Mm -hmm. And how can you resolve those problems to address violence in your schools? And the four schools came up with some interesting ideas. I won't share it now. That is for later on when we want to launch it. But four beautiful programs, each school came up with the students of the school. Mm -hmm. That's very important. And this sounds like a fantastic initiative. We need to have you back on the show to speak a bit more about this yeah. foundation. <laughs> We're going to go into a different um, form of discussion now, speaking about the re role of religion with young Muslims in particular. Let's start with peer pressure. From where you sit and your wide experience, yeah. would you say that peer pressure is something that is a problem for young people in the faith? And what exactly does it entail? Well, peer pressure is a problem for young people in the whole. Right, yes, very true. Right, so being Muslim is, is nothing new to experience peer pressure. But one of the challenges that, um, I, I, I'm cautiously speaking on behalf of young people. Okay. Right? I'm not that young, <laughs> <laughs> again. But um, the, the face, in terms of the peer pressure, like for instance, Ramadan started the week that school had closed. Yeah. Right? So they were started a fast that last week of school. Mm -hmm. And they back out of school today and be still in the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So someone might ask, so long you fasting? Mm -hmm. Because as for a child, you fasting before school closed, school open back, you still fasting. That in itself is a form of peer pressure that youth doesn't really understand and could relate and could express themselves. Well, we fasting for 29 or 30 days, so there's a unification period. You know, so sometimes Non-Muslims mm -hmm. may feel what we do is a pressure on the whole. Yeah. You know, how you're surviving as a fasting. So we have to equip our young people with the tools that they could explain themselves. And we can't take for granted because you're born in a Muslim family, mm -hmm. you are Muslim. You have mm -hmm. to teach your child to be Muslim. Right. You have to train them. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I was born in a Christian family. And I learned about Christianity when I became a Muslim. Interesting. Yeah, I just used to go to church mm -hmm. for the wine, for the little um, <laughs> biscuits. <Yeah. laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But I, didn't, I was not really into the, the teachings of the church until I became Muslim. I, we did comparative religion. Right. So you cannot have your child home and then send them out into this world with so many distractions. Mm -hmm. 
social media, the friends in school, you no know, boys don't have skills. Why your hair? Why your head covered? You know? mm -hmm. something wrong with your hair? I could yeah. touch your hair. I could see your hair. Mm -hmm. So all these are things that young Muslims will face in the school population, and then we have the wider society. Definitely. Now, it's interesting as we speak about, as you mentioned, you know, let's say with children, the school finishes, they know you're fast and you come back out, you're still fast. Still fast. And people are like, well, what's going on? And for some that can be perceived as quite restrictive. Yeah. Would, now, are there a lot of restrictions or at least what we perceive to be restrictions in the faith, particularly? When I now embraced Islam many, mm -hmm. many moons ago. Many moons ago. Right? Yeah. The first thing some, some brothers say, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. I say, oh, wait, hold on. Mm -hmm. What can I do? Mm. And I think we just start off introducing this thing in the wrong way. Okay. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. Yes, there are a lot of things I could do. And the restrictions we have basically is deals with in terms of what we eat, mm -hmm. what we wear, mm -hmm. and our behavior. Right. Right. And in, we're in a society that, I don't want to say we promote immorality, but we, it's a challenge. It's a challenge, you yes, know, definitely. You, you come out in society and it's all over. Mm -hmm. It's all around, you know, on the TV, on the papers. Yeah. So people may see that as restriction, but that's just how our life is governed by the Quran mm -hmm. and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad peace upon him, right? So it, it's about our behavior, yeah. right? So you wouldn't see a Muslim engage in certain behavior that may be acceptable yes. at a societal level, right? You could drink alcohol in society, but we can't drink alcohol, mm -hmm. right? So people are, you know, boy, think you're fresh, I go take a little bet. I go play a mark. We can't play a mark. Can't play a mark. Right? But is that a restriction? No, that is, that is, that is our code of conduct. Mm -hmm. So it may be seen as a restriction for the non-Muslim, but that is just how we live. That's our code of conduct. It's, it's not a restriction it's <laughs> in not, a I mean, sense. It's, it's a way of life, basically. <laughs> but Islam is a way of yeah. life. Yeah. And essentially, and as you mentioned that, especially with the advent of social media, we have TikTok, Instagram, all these things, which, of course, young people are highly invested in. Yes. Um, that can be definitely, I would assume, challenging for young Muslims as well, seeing this all the time and knowing that the way of life that I choose to live is something that is completely different. And we, no, listen, we have to find a way to, are you saying a bit of Buddha, empower our children? <laughs> to, to you, so, mm -hmm. like, I used to work in a school before. I used to work so for many years. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is the cell phone rule. Yeah. But you have to find a way to have these children utilize the cell phone outside of trying to take, um, record Miss F, Miss Buffinia, mm -hmm. or Sir Buffinia, right? So we, we do not topic. You want to research something? You Google it. Phone. Exactly. You know, so the, you find out we know that they could use the same device mm -hmm. constructively. So it's not telling um, young Muslims, don't go on social media, mm -hmm. it's the devil, or mm -hmm. it's haram, mm -hmm. you know? But how can you use that same medium? Because I remember uh, years ago again, an Islamic scholar yeah. telling me, TV, haram, it's unlawful. Mm -hmm. Don't watch it. He has a program on television. <laughs> so I say, okay, you know, how are you negotiating that? Mm -hmm. You telling me don't watch the normal morning show, but you posting the normal morning show. Mm. You know? So we have to really be practical to be because Islam is a practical religion. Yeah. You're not airy fairy. Right? All right. That's interesting as you mentioned, um, being a practical religion, not airy fairy. Agreed one hundred percent. And also just uh, if we can go back to the restrictions, particularly when it comes to young Muslims and love. I mean I should use the term love very lightly because when no, you're but young Hello. Love is lo you said this morning, love is lovely. Love is lovely. It's the best thing in the world. But let's talk about um, young Muslims. Can they be physically affectionate before marriage? What are the rules around that? Keeping in mind, of course, that I know there are different views on this. So they cannot, plain out, be affectionate before marriage. Okay. Or, sorry, they should not. Mm. Because I might say they cannot, and somebody's watching and say, my girl is a Muslim. Mm. No, my boyfriend is a Muslim, so they should not. They shouldn't. Mm -hmm. right? they, let's be practical and real. Right. Right. That's one of the restrictions. They mm -hmm. should not get involved in extramarital relations. Mm -hmm. Although we have a society that 
says that you know you can have a common law and you have the same rights as a marriage mm -hmm. but in islam we, that is not our practice right. how do we treat that again we cannot lock away our sons mm -hmm. and our daughters right because some societies try to do that communities lock them away mm -hmm. right like so, um guy allen come for you can lock them away right so you have to create environments of course where they meet each other mm -hmm. in a safe friendly environment mm -hmm. because let's be real you lock your daughter away she's going to bring a boyfriend home mm -hmm. some cases she's not a muslim right so that's the next question you lock your son away you go bring a girlfriend home in some cases he's not a muslim. a muslim and what about right? that what about marrying outside of the faith it is not advisable that a woman should marry outside of the faith mm -hmm. And I'm saying this, and you know, sometimes when we say things, especially as a Muslim, like, grab at you, you know? Yeah. Why is she wearing a hijab on her head? The nun wear a head covering, the Baptist wear a head covering, mm -hmm. the Hindu. So, we can a little picky when it comes to Islam and yeah. Muslims. For her protection, mm -hmm. meaning the husband, mm -hmm. right, is the head of the home. Oh, look at them. Hello. All religions are said that. Yes, agreed. So don't come at me with that about it. Oh, he's the head of the home. I mean, all religions say that. Mm -hmm. And he leads the prayer. Mm -hmm. Right? So you need that the husband is Muslim, so the family can be guided along that path. Right. Now, a Muslim man, this have no man is better than woman, a Muslim man could marry outside of the faith, but what we call the people of the book mm -hmm. in terms of those who adhere to a certain religious ideology, mm -hmm. not a polytheist. Right, okay. Right? Now, his wife, again, he's head of the home, the lead, so he will lead the prayer, mm -hmm. right? His wife may not or do have to actually embrace Islam, right? Mm -hmm. But they have that allowance, right? So, yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, just listening to that, and I have to agree with you there, you know, man, head of the household, leading in prayer and so forth, and you mentioned with all the different religions, it is something that we see throughout, yeah. so it's something to keep in mind. MT, I wish we had more time with you, and I'm really hoping that you come back on the show soon. So Damn. thank you for being here, uh, and I hope that you continue to enjoy the rest of your day, and Ram Ramadan Mubarak to you. Yes, and I'd like to extend um, Eid Mubarak to the Muslim community, ah, there you go. and the general community, because you all also celebrated us. It's a multicultural country, you know, so thank you very much for having me. It's our pleasure to have you here. Yeah. I'm Tima Solwazi, founder of the Oral Roots Foundation and so much more here with us on the Now Morning Show, who will be back soon. And we'll be back right after this break.